Welcome back to the interview. We're filming on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., the road that leads from the United States Congress up there behind me to the White House, just a couple of blocks from here. As the crow flies, only two and a half kilometers separate the two buildings from one another. But for much of the recent past, they might as well have been on different planets. Barack Obama is just the latest US president to grapple with an increasingly polarized Washington. A city in which an ability to compromise used to be considered a valuable political commodity, today the capital is dominated by negativity and paralysis. But it's still that's, a tax that, increase. That, that, no, no that, that, that's not true, George. Absolutely not a tax increase. It isn't just the campaign advertisements that have become more vicious as the two political parties go after each other. There is, say political analysts, a real sense today of gridlock. They come here with the mindset that legislating is actually now going to the barricades for your ideological favorite issue. Instead of legislating be get around the table and people of different minds actually come to a compromise. And so when you ask Singapore's soon to depart ambassador what she'll miss most about Washington, the city's increased political polarization isn't on the list. I look at it and wonder, but it's Americans, thoughtful Americans, that worry about this they use the word dysfunctional, you know, and I quote them. And many, some of them are corporate leaders, you know. I've heard them say, use this word, at the dysfunctionality of the system, that there is far greater interest for the, each side to bring down the other, you know. And right now, they're in the mood, you know. Whoever is in authority, bring them down, that's the public. Whoever is on one side, if he proposes it, I will be against it. Now, you know, that's a new America that now I see. As past US presidents have found, if they can't get things done at home, they can initiate change overseas. And over the last year, Barack Obama has been busy pointing America's foreign policy in a different direction. The United States is and always will be a Pacific nation. The White House calls it a geostrategic pivot towards the Asia Pacific in recognition of the growing role the region plays on the global stage. It's been a big shift in this short time. But, you know, this administration has certainly intensified the engagement with Asia. The question is, can this be sustained? And I think this is what uh, Asians do ask. Can it be sustained at a time when, you know, resources are much less? Do you think they can actually uh, financially afford to sustain this policy shift? They are going to move some things, you know, and is still in a state of flux. But I believe that perhaps the time of establishing U.S. bases is over. So uh, it will be a different kind of engagement. And uh, I think they are thinking of diplomatic engagement, economic engagement, but even there the competition gets stiff. Competition from, among others, China. Beijing is wary of the United States' renewed interest in Asia, wary too of vows to deploy the majority of America's warships in the region by the end of the decade. Ambassador Chan says nations throughout Asia find themselves having to balance their relationships with the USA and China. Like all countries in Asia, Singapore would like to be friends with both the uh, great powers and our job is to make sure that, uh, you know, there is no conflict. Would that other regions of the world were conflict-free. But as Ambassador Chan spends her final weeks in Washington, she and the other members of the diplomatic corps here have been watching the crisis in Syria with a growing sense of concern. And Ambassador Chan looks at the issues from a unique perspective. She served as Singapore's ambassador to the United Nations before her posting to Washington and watched the world body take on a new commitment, R2P, the responsibility to protect citizens from atrocities committed by their own governments. You know, when we talk too much about R2P, I wonder, because it requires res responsibility to protect. It requires resources. It requires a skill, it requires staying power. And today, given the fact that a lot of the economies are in bad shapes, the willing are in a bad shape economically, how do you take that kind of action? And there are also 
consequences. So are you saying that it was a mistake for the United Nations to embrace the responsibility to protect concept? I think that the responsibility to protect has to be implemented much more carefully. Who is going to be the fireman rushing in? With what tools to put out the fire all the time? Who's going to volunteer? No one wants to be the gendarme now. You know, you can talk the good talk, but can you walk the walk? The reality. For now, Ambassador Chan's immediate reality is that it will soon be time to go. Her departure is being widely noted in Washington, a city where the diplomatic corps plays a big role politically, but culturally as well. Oh, there are many things, you know, but I would miss most of all the conversations I've had here. The tone of the conversations and the quality of the conversations. So at any time, you can sit down and have a good discussion on policy. I will miss that. But beyond policy discussions, you know, Washington has become a very good place for the arts. And uh, uh, good, there's good music, and I love music, and uh, good plays, and uh, so there's the softer side of life here too. But I, miss the, I will miss the people. But it's time to go home because I believe there's still much I can do at home. And I'm really looking forward to that. Ambassador Chan is not retiring. She'll soon be back in Singapore, getting ready to head the Lee Kuan Yew Centre for Innovative Cities, part of the new Singapore University of Technology and Design. She'll also become an ambassador at large, retaining her ties to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, her connections to the global issues on which she's worked for more than two decades, and her friendships here in Washington, the city she's called home for so long. Stay tuned to Channel News Asia. We'll always have continuing coverage of whatever comes next in Singapore's relationship with the United States. I'm Simon Marks from Washington. Goodbye. <laughs>